Hi, it's Jocelyn. So it's almost December, which means it is almost Evna Code, which I'm just so excited about. Um, these past few Decembers, Evna Code has absolutely been a highlight. So for my challenge this year, I'm going to try to record my solutions, so let me know how clear I am. Uh, my goal is to solve them as quickly as possible and try to get on the leaderboard. I don't think I'll do that very many days, but that's the goal. We'll see how I do. I'm going to be trying to solve these problems in Rust. The Rust community is just amazing. I feel like everyone really wants each other to succeed, which um, I just find really inspiring. Um, so yeah, let's get into it. So this is the template that I'll be using every day. Um, there's the function for part B. I'll probably create another function for part B, just copy and paste it just for time. Um, it takes the input we're given and computes generally a number, sometimes it'll be a string. And then I have some tests. So if there's any useful examples that I feel like I need to run, um, or if I'm stuck and I need to use the examples, um, then I'll paste them here. Otherwise, there's going to be a test for part A and for part B. Um, so it's going to load the string from over here. Um, this will be the sample input that will download using curl. And it will check to make sure that when it's run, it results in this value. Um, so of course, that's not the right value. The test will fail. We will copy and paste the number into Evna code. And if it works, then we will um, fix the test. And then we have an artifact that um, shows that we got it to work. Um, and yeah, um, and a regression test. So I use Cargo Watch just to make sure that, or just so that when I save either of these files, um, that it will rerun the tests uh, over on the left. And this saves a little bit of time. Um, I use dash dash release because sometimes that just gives you the amount of time that just, you know, makes it run a bit faster, which makes the difference between not being able to solve the problem in a reasonable amount of time and being able to solve the problem in a reasonable amount of time, even with a bad solution. And no capture just means that any standard out from print line or standard error from a print line uh, will get um, pasted right away and it will get um, pasted in this output even if the test succeeds. Usually it's suppressed if it doesn't, um, if it doesn't fail. So yeah, so super close, 45 seconds to go. Oh, that's a scary, I can do this. I mean, I'm not going to make the leaderboard, but hopefully I can still solve it pretty quickly. So like I said, I have this curl command right there. When this timer reaches zero, I'm just going to press enter. And then we'll see what our input looks like. Um, so yeah, if you have any, any interesting solutions, feel free to post them below, or I'm always interested in feedback for sure. All right, 10. So close. Five, four, three, two, one. And let's go. Okay, so we have a bunch of numbers. One per line, it looks like. Sonar sweet. Your mind during your business on a ship at sea when the overward alarm goes off, and we want to try to help. We need to get stars by 50 by December 25th, and hopefully we can get one today. Um, so apparently it's the sonar sweep, and it indicates that scanning outward from the submarine, this, the sonar sweep found depths of 199, 200, 208, 210, blah. Okay, so the first order of business is to figure out how quickly a depth increases. Um, so count the number of times a depth measurement increases from the previous one. Um, so what we're going to do is we're going to parse these into numbers. Um, I-64 the nice. And then we're going to collect them into, um, into a vector. Then we're going to count the number of increases, which starts at zero. And then for I in zero to C dot Lin, um, actually we're going to start the first one. And if it's more than the pre if it's more than the previous one, so if C i is more than C i minus one, then increases goes up by one. And 
let's see if this compiles. Um, so it says that there's 1400, uh, which seems reasonable to me. And we got rank 390. Okay, so continue to part two. Um, so number times the measurement. Okay, sliding window. Um, so start by comp okay, so start going back can be the first and second three second window. Um, okay, yeah. So I'm just gonna copy and paste this and so it seems like we are starting at four it looks like and we're checking the previous three um, sorry actually no yeah we're yeah the previous three okay uh, no start by comparing the first and second three measure three measurement windows the measurements the first window marked a first sum is blah marked b is marked blah sum is blah. Okay, so the sum in the measurements in the second window is larger than the one in the first, so this comparison increased. Um, okay, got, yeah, that's right. Okay, got that right. So uh, we're doing um, this, of course, we could do better, but we're not going to. We're going to try to, we're, we're trying to solve this as quickly as possible um, and still losing. So if um, a is greater than b, because so, that means it's increased. Okay, yeah. So this sh this should be good now. So let's see if this works. And so we'll just create a test for part um, b, and let's see what the answer is. Oops, I didn't save. Okay, and it's saying that that should be 1428. And that's not the right answer. Okay, what did I do wrong? Um, okay, so, oh, does this, did I, is this just an all by one error? do minus three. Oh yeah, no, minus three will crash. Nope, that's that's right. 1429. 27 seconds. Um, don't know what else I can try. Okay, so yeah, I think that's probably just the problem. So we'll just wait 10 more seconds as painfully as that is, or as painful as that is. Two more seconds, and 515. All right, wow, people are crazy. Anyway, thanks for watching.